Hey everybody, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make the sideways beanie. And I wanted to tell you now that I'm going to be using uh, part of the tutorial, the end of the tutorial, how to put the hat together. I'm going to be using that in a future tutorial because I made another one with another stitch that I'm going to be coming out with next week. And it's also going to be closed the same way. I guess on these tutorials I've decided I'm going to go ahead and just show you the stitch uh, and then the next tutorial I'll show you how to do this stitch and on the end of both the videos we'll have the same tutorial that will show you how to close the hat because the hat gets closed exactly the same way. So I'm going to be teaching you using some yarn I have not used in a very long time. I broke out my tutorial yarn, that thick stuff. Or is it? <clears throat> This stuff is thick, chunky yarn, I guess you can call it. Boy, I used to have every single tutorial come out, I would use this. Um, go ahead and grab your five millimeter hook or size H hook for the US. This is what I used to make this pattern. I also used worsted weight yarn. I used two different colors. I got two skeins, one white, one uh, uh, gray, and I didn't use either. You won't use all the skeins, so if you have uh, like the second color, you have a half a skein of the second color and a lot of the main color you want to use, then that may be enough. Okay, to begin, you want to make 20 single crochet foundation stitches. So you're going to do your chain of two, and then you're going to go into that very first chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, then yarn over, pull through two. That's your first single crochet foundation stitch. I have a video that I take you step by step on how to do the single crochet foundation stitch. I don't want to draw the hat video out on a single crochet foundation stitch. So go ahead and do your 20 single crochet foundation stitches and I will see you back here in a moment. Okay, just finished. I got my 20 single crochet foundation stitches and I'm ready for row two. So you want to chain two and turn. This first chain two that we did counts as the first stitch. So this very first single crochet is done. So we're going to move over to the next one and we're going to do a double crochet in the second single crochet foundation stitch. So yarn over, go into that second stitch of the row and put a single crochet foundation stitch. I'm sorry, put a double crochet in the single crochet foundation stitch. Ugh. I bet at this point you're telling me to shut up and stop saying single crochet foundation stitch. And I agree with you. Anyway, so first you do the chain two and then you put a double crochet in the second stitch. So for all your stitches, all your single crochet foundation stitches for the rest of this row, you'll put one double crochet in them. So at the end of this row you should have 19 double crochets and a chain two there on the end. So continue on and put your double crochets in each of your stitches. Okay, I've reached the end of row two. So now we're ready for row three. You should have your 19 double crochets in your chain two. So for row three, uh, we're only going to be working on the post from now on. So no more working in the stitches, only on the post of the stitch. So for row three, chain two and turn. The chain two will count as the first stitch of your row to make it kind of a cleaner uh, border on both sides. I went ahead and made them both just regular double crochet. So I guess you will be working in the stitch, but only on the first and the last stitch of the row. The row. The rest will be worked on the post. So chain two, that's our first border stitch. And then, so you're gonna find that very first double crochet of the row the second here and you're going to pick up that post and you're going to be doing a front post double crochet on there which is essentially just doing a double crochet worked on the post and not in the stitch. So you want to do that again, yarn over, find the next post, grab it up and do a double crochet. We're going to be working in twos so you'll have two front posts and then the next two will be back posts. So yarn over, come from the back push that next post back, then yarn over, pull that loop through and up, 
and do a double crochet. This is our back post. Then again, we are doing in sets of two, so you're going to do that again. So you have two back posts, two front posts. And if you need a slower video to show you how to do front post and back post, I also have a, a very good slowed down video. Not actually like slowed down, but very slow and explaining slowly and everything. I don't think it has slow motion in it. Anyway, I'll put that uh, link for you down there. So you're going to continue to do that for the row, putting two front post double crochets, then two back post double crochets, and then you should end where you have only this last chain two here on the end, which like I said is going to be our, our second border stitch. It'll be our border stitch on this side. So you will always double crochet in the top of the chain two, and then you will always chain two to start the next row. Okay, I've come to that part at the end of row three, and I'm going to double crochet in the top of my chain two. And then that will end row three. So for row four, again we'll chain two to start the row, and turn, and now we're going to be doing a front post again on the second post of the row. It shows that it's a, a back post, and if you've done the basket weave before, then you'll know what back post from the back looks like, and what a front post. See, this, is, this was the back post that we did last time. Now it looks like a front post, and our front post now look like a back post. But you can tell that if it has this line here in, the, in between, and they're both pushed back here, it's a back post. And from post, hopefully you can tell pretty easily. So the trick to this stitch is that you're going to be doing two rows with the flow of the stitch and two rows without the flow of the stitch. That's why I took the moment to try to explain to you what you're seeing here because uh, that's going to be very important in a minute. The row we just did our front and back post on was just a, a regular double crochet row, so it didn't really have any decision in it. We kind of pushed it last row by doing the row. So this row, row four, we're going to be going against... Sorry, that was my phone. So we want to do the opposite of what we see here. So we have a back post, so we're going to want to do a front post. So for row four, you want to do a front post double crochet in the first two stitches. And then on these front post double crochets here, we're going to be pushing those back and we'll be doing a back post. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to go from the front again. Do a back post. Double crochet. So now on these next two back post ones, we're going to be doing front post. So you want to continue this for your row, doing the opposite of what you see. So on the very end of your row, double crochet in the top of the chain two, chain two, and this will end row four. So flip it on over and we'll do row five. Okay. So for row five, you're going to be doing back post on the second. Okay, so now what you see in front of you is back post, and this is the front post, obviously. So this is the row we're going to be going with the flow. So we have back post here, so we're going to do back post. And then we have front post here. So we're going to do front post. So just like I said, last row we did the opposite of what we saw. This row we'll be doing exactly what we see and we'll be mimicking it. And that's how you'll do it for every row after that. So row six will be the opposite of what you see. And row seven will be mimic what you see. So one together, one I'll actually say in the, in the pattern as the tip. One row you'll go with the flow, the next, the next one opposite. Took me a little bit to figure that out, but it sure made it easier with this stitch once I figured that out. And if you look at it here, you'll see that this is two sets. 
and this one only has one so you know you're going to need to do what it says at least one more time so that you'll have two sets just like you have here I'm going to go ahead and finish this row okay so now we've reached the ending chain two so I'm going to yarn over find the top of that chain two and put a double crochet and that will end row five so now we're just going to keep repeating that so again we're going to be doing the opposite for next row because we just went with the flow here so you'll be always double crocheting to end a row and chaining two to begin a row and since we went with the flow last time this row we're going to be doing opposite so we have a front post here so I'm going to do a back post Whoop. maybe I'll do a back post there we go so these two front ones will be a back post now we got a back post here so I'm going to turn them into front post and you're going to continue in this pattern over and over and over again until your project reaches 47 centimeters or 18 inches in length because remember you're you're going to be making a rectangle so it's going to grow longer and longer and longer and longer and then you're going to want to measure that uh, until it's 47 centimeters. Centimeters is what I deal with out here in Israel, but uh, 18 inches is what it is. And 50 centimeters or 19 inches for an adult. And if I tried to make it uh, my piece a little wider so that it wouldn't stretch, so it wouldn't leave a lot of holes in it, you know, by stretching. So I, I really made it, uh, I made it probably a little bit wider than it even needed to be. So when you wear the hat, it actually doesn't stretch out the design so much. So if you need to make it bigger uh, for like an adult male or something like that, I recommend maybe even taking it out to 20 inches or 53 centimeters. But you can find out what it is uh, for you if you just wrap that part around the head of the person, if you have access to that person. Maybe they don't want a very tight hat, but just keep in mind it does need to be a little, a little uh, snug so that it will grab onto your head. You don't want it to be so loose it flops around. So keep in mind that it does need to stretch a little. Don't make it too wide. Okay, I'm back and it's several days later. So now you're in the future. Anyways, you can see I went ahead and used the same stitch. Uh, I didn't decide, my, uh, my son chose it. He really liked the original hat that I made for Lily. So, but he wanted blue, so I went ahead and made my piece blue, but you don't have to see me crochet this part. You just need to see me crochet on it, so I picked a lighter color, which he's cool with, this gray color. And I'm going to be showing you how to put, take your rectangle piece here and make it to a hat. Now, uh, it's for a kid, so I stopped around, uh, I, on the pattern I said 47 centimeters, here I stopped at about uh, 48 centimeters is what it ended up being, but get past 47 before you stop, and 47 centimeters is 18 inches, so at least get to 18 inches minimum before you stop, or it may be too tight, but you do want it to have some grip, and about 47 centimeters is about that. So what you want to do is find the front side, which this is the front side. So I'm going to turn it over and fold it in half this way. That way I have the front side showing. I do still have the front side. Wow, this really looks a lot alike. So, Oh yeah, well, you are going back and forth in a row, so there really isn't a front side, back side. So I guess just find the side that you like better. And I think this is the side for me. So once you've got that, once you've got your piece folded like this, the original side where you did your control, uh, your single crochet foundation stitches will be a little wider. At least it always is for me. So what I'm going to do is, since my my uh, I'm right-handed and my, but it won't matter on the video. But whichever side that you like, just go off that, and then your loop should be on the side that you crochet. So if you're right-handed, it should be on the right, and if you're left-handed, it should be on the left. And then the opposite corner. You need to find the very last stitch of the row, which on this side is a chain two. 
and on this side it looks to be a double crochet or a chain two it's another chain two so I'm gonna go in the last chain spaces on this side and I'm gonna put my marker there I'm gonna go through both those stitches which creates a loop like this and then you want to grab the rest of your tail and just pull it through the loop and that is going to hold this piece together so it'll help you be able to align yourself on this side so this one I already have a chain two because I was preparing to do the next row so I'm back that out so I ended on a uh, double crochet no chain and I'm going to go through this first stitch here on this side and then I'm going to go through the first the double crochet on this side the last one that I did and I'm going to pull up a loop and then oh wait a minute I'm in the wrong uh, color I need to change my color I'm going to sew with the new color so you want to find your you want to so once you have this side marked, you can move over to the other side and find your loop. And I have no chaining here, though you can chain one if you want to, if it makes it easier. But I want to switch colors because I'm going to be sewing using my new color here, my second color. So I'm going to pull this. I always like to leave a little bit of a tail because I like to work it in later on. So I'm going to pull that through my loop. And it's going to become my new color and I want to go through the very first stitch on this side and then my very first stitch on this side which was the double crochet so I'm going to go in through this stitch and then through this stitch and it's a really loose right here but you can just pull on the yarn to tighten it up you just want to pull through both of those stitches leaving that loop on your hook and then you'll yarn over and pull through both of them and that's your first single crochet now if you want I can leave the hook out of the way if you want you can tie a few knots I, I always feel better if I can at least tie a few knots when I change colors okay now what you want to do I'm going to cut this yarn here I don't need it Now you want to stay as even as you can. Remember this these uh, the marked stitches on the end are together and these two stitches here are together so you want to try to flatten your row as evenly as you can and it's okay if it poops, poofs up as long as it's as even as you can because once you get to sewing it's going to help it's going to bring those poofs down. So I'm going to go right into my next stitch going through the next stitch on both sides so don't just go in through one side we're going to be working through both sides because we're sewing them together so when I say the next stitch I mean the next double stitches because we're sewing so you go into your next stitches pull up a loop and single crochet and you don't want to do your single crochet tight here you want to keep it uh, as as even as you can And as you do this, continue to, after a few stitches, check it again. And then keep making your way across till you reach your marker. Oh, what is that one? Just trying to keep it as uniform as I can. Keep stopping to check and see if your piece is... Uh, straight because this is the time to make adjustments if you need I'm just trying to keep it as a uh, I wouldn't say loose not loose not tight and as uniform as you can it's gonna look the best now this is the very last stitch now I can remove my marker and now I like to chain one at least one or two and you can open 
Oops, I'm gonna go. Let me back up just a little bit for this. Um, you can you can see now that it's it's all sewn together, one piece. And now we want to work on our top. So this is going to be where we'll start reducing. Okay, for round one, chain one or chain two, whichever one is your preference, whichever helps you reach this uh, first stitch on the side here. Okay, now I think I need to get closer. So the first uh, stitch that's not connected is this one right here. So I'm going to go into that one and single crochet. And you want to single crochet as evenly as you can. This is where you you're basically you're creating your even stitches like for instance I have double crochets here and I can already see putting one in each one of my double crochets is not going to be enough so sometimes like for this one I may have to put two but I would not recommend going through and putting two in each side stitch because the idea behind this is you do want to eventually shrink down this side. But this color will show up along the top of your hat where it's connecting. So you do want it to look nice. The only thing you have to be concerned about when doing this is besides the look is uh, making sure that you end on an even number actually that's uh, for here it doesn't matter for here at the bottom when you do the bottom you will have to make sure you end on an even number but actually at the top here when you're closing it up it's pretty much all about just the look because uh, the point behind it is just that we're trying to get it to shrink. And we want, it, we want to make it shrink and still look as good as possible. So I never even counted the stitches on the top. Because if, I start, if it started to bunch up too much or it just looked not good, I would just rip it out. So this goes for the other one as well, the other kind of stitch. because. I'm going to be using this for both patterns. So if you're doing this with the uh, the other stitch I used, then it's the same. You'll want to to just make it as evenly as you can. This is why uh, I'm going to use the same part of the tutorial for both hats because this is not going to change. I always lay it down flat just to check. That looks pretty good. Doesn't look too weird. Nothing too eye catching that's going to go, okay, that's a mistake or something like that. No right or wrong. As long as it looks decent. But uh, doing a row of just plain single crochets gives you a, you know, does, it helps with the stress I think of it all because every side stitch is different and if you can just get the same base line going which is just a row of single crochets and then work within the single crochets it makes things so much easier so I'm getting close to okay this is the stitch that I sewed in and this here is a small little stitch beforehand and that's where I'm going to end then I'm going to double check all the way around see if it's even see if it looks good I think it looks good enough so this is that was the first round and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go right into my next stitch so you don't have to slip stitch uh, into this very first one just use this very first one as your next stitch we're not going to be using any of the side stitches that we used to sew so going into that very first single crochet, we're going to be starting round two. So round two is going to start with a decrease. So to do a decrease, you insert your hook into the stitch and pull up a loop. And then when doing a decrease, you're going to be doing the next stitch as well the same way. So you're going to insert your hook in the next stitch and pull up a loop. 
three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops, and that's a single crochet decrease. Then you want to do a single crochet in the next two single crochets. So one and two. Now you're going to do a single crochet decrease again. So using the next two stitches, you're just going to grab up a loop, pull through all three loops, and then the next two stitches will be one single crochet, one single crochet. And that's the way you're going to continue. Single crochet decrease, and then two single crochets, one after the next. So I'll show you one more time. Go into the first stitch, then pull a loop in the second stitch, pull through all three loops, and then you'll single crochet one, and single crochet one in the next. And that's your repeat for this row. So continue, single crochet decrease, and then single crochet in the next two stitches. Okay, I just got to the last stitch on the end of my row, and it just so happened to be a decrease, and then a single crochet, single crochet, so it ended up perfectly for me. But if you ended on a decrease here, then you may want to start with a single crochet next. Because for row three, we're going to be doing a double crochet decrease with only one single crochet in between. So it'll be single crochet decrease, single crochet one, single crochet decrease, single crochet one. So if you just did a decrease, just do a single crochet first and then do a decrease. But I ended on uh, perfectly with the two single crochets after my decrease. So I'm going to begin this row one and my very first single crochet and I'm going to use my first two single crochets to do my first decrease. And then now I'm only, only going to do one single crochet before I do my next decrease. So for row three, you're going to be doing a single crochet and then a single crochet decrease in the next stitch. And then a single crochet and then a single crochet decrease in the next stitch. And you want to repeat that all the way around for round three. Okay, so I just finished round three, and I just finished my single crochet decrease and then single crochet, and I'm close enough now to the beginning that I'm going to go ahead and start round four. And for round four, all you want to do is do a single crochet decrease all the way around. So you're just going to be doing single crochet decreases this round. So go ahead and do that all the way around. I'm trying to, to make the holes here on the top not be as big. It's hard to do when I'm laying down like this in front of the camera. But if you can, while you're doing it, try not to make this end loop be too big. It's going to be somewhat bigger than the rest, but just try your best not to make it overly big. So continue to do that single crochet decrease all the way around, and I'll see you at the end of round four. Okay, I just got through doing my last single crochet decrease and I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch in my very next stitch and chain one because I want to cut my yarn. But when you cut your yarn, make sure that you leave yourself a decent enough amount of yarn because you're going to use it to sew your hat closed. So since I already chained one, I'm just going to go ahead and pull that yarn through. This is where I get my tapestry needle. Okay, once you thread your tapestry needle, go ahead and hand it to yourself through your hole, and then turn your hole inside out. You should do most of the sewing on the inside of your hat, the part that won't show. Okay, so what you want to do is create a pulley system to be able to close this hat. My yarn naturally wants to pull this direction so I'm going to go ahead and go that way and I guess I'm going to start by going in my first stitch from this direction away from me towards me and then you want to go back in the opposite direction and then the next stitch you'll want to go back so your yarns coming out this way so the next stitch We'll need to come in this way and then you can go in through this way. You're just going to go back and forth 
as soon as I paused the video, I started doing it the way I usually do it and thought I should probably show you. Uh, now that you've seen what I'm doing, um, I usually go in one stitch, then I'll come back out through the next, then I'll go back in through the next, and then out through it, kind of weaving my tapestry needle through there. That way when you do a pull through, you can pull through several stitches. Anyway, I'm getting close to the end. You can tell by pulling where does it uh, not pull. And if it doesn't pull enough in one direction, you can add more of a pulley system there. But I think that and I've now got it all the way around really good. And when I pull, the whole thing closes. So now you want to make sure that it doesn't, doesn't stop being closed. So once you have it tight, you want to start, let me get a little closer. You want to start going through some of the outside stitches like this. Go across the hole. See my hole is here. So I'm, t I'm going through one side, the stitches where the hole is, out the other side. And you can do this few times all the way around just to ensure that it is not going to come loose and then while uh, it still has a loop here don't pull it all the way through you can go through your loop you can do that as well a few times it helps and also I suggest when you're ready when you've got it in there enough to to do that same method leaving this last little loop here and then instead of pulling it through using it to create a couple of then I cut my cut my loop like that and then I'll cut my tail as well then I will hide my tails all three of these tails in you know around the sides so it can turn your hat inside out now Okay, now you want to get your new color again now that we've closed the top of our hat and you want to you want to have it on the correct side. This is the side that will be the outside. Uh, you can take the time to hide these tail, tails, which I think I'm gonna. And when hiding my tails I usually like to go one direction and then I like to go back a different direction. Don't pull too tightly and then tug on your actual project before you cut your tail as close as you can to your project. Okay, now we want to get our, flip this around here because we're going to be working now on our, our, the rim of the hat. Let me find, making the rim. Okay, round one. So attach a new color using a single crochet attachment and single crochet as evenly as you can using the side stitches, which is exactly what we did here. To attach your yarn with a single crochet attachment, all that means is that whichever is going to be your first stitch, which is going to be here for me, you just want to pull up a loop and instead of pulling it through to do a slip stitch, you're just going to keep it on your hook and then yarn over and pull through both loops like you would a single crochet. Considering we're going to be doing single crochets all the way around, it just looks better. So you're going to do exactly what you did before. You're going to find the side stitches and try to keep it as evenly as you can. So continue all the way around, keeping it as evenly as you can all the way around. And when you get done with this, when you get close to the end here, not, not like maybe one or two stitches away. If you want, you can go right to the end and then count your stitches and see if you have an uh, even amount of stitches because they have to be in a set of sets of two. So if you get all the way up here and you are even, then you can continue. If not, then maybe you want to make this last one a uh, double crochet or actually uh, you may want to back up and do two 
if you're short one stitch do two in one stitch there on the end just make sure you you end on an even number of stitches okay so I just got done with my single crochets all the way around as evenly as I can and I got up to the beginning and I've counted my stitches I have 64 stitches so that's an even number so I'm ready to go ahead and end round one by slip stitching in our beginning single crochet then for round two you want to chain two and then we're going to be doing a double crochet decrease and then a double crochet in the next then the next two stitches we'll be using for a double, cr double crochet decrease and then we'll double crochet in the next and I'm going to do a uh, double crochet decreases a little different than what I do for my afghans because I really want to bring this uh, hat tighter together so what I'm going to do is I'm going to yarn over go into the very next stitch pull up a loop and then I'm going to go right into the very next stitch and pull up a loop and then I'm going to pull through three loops then pull through two loops then you want to do a regular double crochet in the next stitch then again I'm going to do a uh, little bit, bit then again I'm going to do a double crochet decrease so yarn over go into that first stitch pull up a loop then go right into the next stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull through three then yarn over pull through two and then do a regular double crochet in the next well I'm using a lot of da -da 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 double a lot of D's so again yarn over getting tongue twisted so you want to continue to do double crochet decreases followed by a regular double crochet all the way around and I'll see you when you get back up to the end of round two okay I just got done uh, get my decrease here and then my single double crochet there and I counted my stitches again you want to make sure you you end on an even number and make sure that you count this beginning chain so this would be one two three four and at the end I have 42 stitches and I'm going to slip stitch in the top of that first chain two and that will end row two for round three you want to chain two and then you'll be putting a front post worked on this very first stitch and if it works out good this will be a back post and then you'll it'll be surrounded by front post on either side and it helps to hide this area as well so you want to start by chaining two and doing a front post on that very first stitch so grab up that post and do a single I mean and do a double crochet and then the next one because we're going to be alternating front post and back post you want to yarn over and do a back post on the next stitch then again you did a back post so now you're going to do a front post and then do a back post double crochet so we're going to keep doing the alternating front post double crochet and then the next one will be a back post double crochet and you want to continue to do this all the way around and I'll see you at the end of round three okay I'm coming up to the end of round three still alternating okay so I ended on a front post double crochet and now here's my chain at the very beginning and you want to slip stitch in the beginning of that chain two then again chain two and then again you'll be working a front post underneath the first one and then a back post underneath a back post double crochet underneath the next one you'll be alternating the exact same thing you just did putting front post double crochets on your front post and putting back post double crochets on your back post and you'll always slip stitch in the top of the chain two and then continue on to the next and you'll do this for two more rounds that was round three so repeat that for rounds four and five and you can continue and make it even um, longer if you would prefer okay so I got to the end of my row this is the at the end of row five and I've come up to my chain again so I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch in that beginning chain then chain one leaving a, enough of a 
tail to be worked in with a tapestry needle. Cut your yarn. And now this next part is optional. You don't have to obviously because it's just for look. But for anyone who may want to know how to do it, I'm going to show you how I did that embroidery piece along the bottom. Again, I always make my tails long because I like to be able to hide them really good. I like to go more than one way when I hide my tails. Okay, so what you want to do is, in this very first one too, I went ahead and I, uh, I grabbed up, see this is the beginning, this is the chain, and here you can see there's kind of a space that goes, runs along the top. You can see it's pretty pretty big space there. This is why I decided to do the embroidery because this is our uh, decrease row and when you decrease it leaves holes sometimes so I thought it would look nice uh, that I would grab that first front post that we did. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my yarn on my hook. Pull it through that and then you're just going to slip stitch. Then I'm going to grab up the very next stitch and then you just slip stitch. Very loosely you want to do this. Make sure that you're not going to shrink this top at all because you're going to need it to stretch for the kid to put it on your head. So it may even be a good idea for you to stretch it a little bit before you do this because you want to make sure if, if you decide to do this that you want to do it very loosely and very evenly so that it actually will look good. Just picking it, picking up the post and very loosely I am adding uh, an embroidery on the top which is basically just, I'm just doing a slip stitch. Doing it very loose and you can loosen up your loop beforehand too. That also is a technique you can use to make sure they stay loose. Make sure your loop is loose and easier to pull through. It's okay to have a, a bigger loop this time to control your tightness. And you can check yourself to make sure you're staying loose. And just take your time. Go loose all the way around. And if you need to, rip it out because it's too tight at the end uh, when you get done, then do it. I really recommend do not let this embroidery row add any tightness unless you actually need tightness and this could be a, a way to make it a little bit tighter around if you need to adjust the size a little smaller. And don't be afraid to add more rows of this if you prefer that. So it's your hat. So go ahead and continue to do this all the way around. Okay, I'm here on my very last, this is my chain two here that I'm doing. And then I'm just going to go into, or under I should say, again I feel like I'm too far away. This is my very first embroidery um, that I did. I'm just going to go under that first, I'm going to go underneath the same stitch I used uh, to begin this whole thing. And I'm going to embroider, that'll be my last one that I used to slip stitch and then I'm going to chain one, cut my yarn, then you can pull that and that will end and I made sure I did it really loose so it didn't add, well now I'm too close, so that didn't add any uh, stretch here, I mean didn't add any tightness to the, the hat itself and now I just need to hide all my tails and put my pom-pom on the top. So that's it guys. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to like and share this video. It helps me out so much. Comment down below if you have any questions. Um, you can always find the link to the pattern, the free pattern, in the video's description. And if I do make the video for the pom-pom, again, that will also be in the, the description down below. Uh, if you want to always be notified whenever I release a new tutorial, you can go next to this subscribe button, that little bell button, and click to get all notifications. Also, I have a couple of groups on Facebook. There's a private group called Crochet for the Masses, and then there's a public group called Crochet Zone Public. 
uh, you can go there and subscribe be part of the crochet community there also if you're on Pinterest I have Melodores creations community free crochet links posted by not just myself by other designers as well also you can check out my newsletter I have a newsletter now if you want to be notified whenever I release something new on my channel or if I have any news uh, on my site or anything that is the the number one place to go to at least be updated on what's new happening to the site so that's it guys uh, thank you so very much for watching Thank you.